Hi, Daniel here. This is the project I'm working on currently. And before I go too far with this one, I'd like to share with you the main techniques that I used while the graph is still readable and there's not too much to show. Just note that this project is not ideal for beginners. I wouldn't recommend trying to reproduce this project if you're just starting out with Substance Designer. The concrete tutorial is a good one to start with or maybe the stylized dice. Other channels on YouTube also have good stuff to learn. And to finish with this short disclaimer, this video is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. This specific exercise is actually a request from one of you. And here is my main reference. Damage Wallpaper Wall by Elliot Butler. I like the result, very realistic, good execution. Let me show you other references. And here's my take on this subject. It's not finished yet. I need to texture the wood and finish working on the paper. I also have to texture what's beneath the paper. The most important piece of work in this project is the damage layering system. I tweak the settings for you now so that you can watch it in action. As I said, I'll have to make a damage pass for all the different layers. But as you can see, the system works, and I'm going to show you how to set it up. But let's begin with the basic structure first. I cover this quickly because it's not the most difficult thing to do here. For the beams, I just combined horizontal and vertical shapes. A light bevel here to help with the displacement. Here is a copy mode and not a max light N1 because it helps me turn down uh, the value of the vertical beams. Uh, that way I can add uh, the small frames later on. If I choose max lighten, they disappear. Here I just added a plinth and a horizontal molding. The moldings are done with a curve node. Using a transform 2D allowed me to work on the bigger scale with the curve node. So the transform node is just here to reduce the size of the pattern created. The thing is, you cannot zoom on what you're making with the curve node. That's a limitation. So I found this trick. It's easier to work with precision that way. Here, the copy mode with low value gave me a softer pattern. Then I made small wooden frames. The bevel gave me the gradients needed to work with the curve node. That's mandatory if you want to get a good result out of the curve node, you need a gradient. Same technique for the other smaller frames. And then the blends.
Now let's talk about the floral ornament. It's something that you could do with the curved drawing system. I made a video about it, but it's just naturally quicker and easier to do it from a bitmap if you just want something flat like what we have here. So I started with a simple photograph of a wall and just cut this pattern here in Photoshop. And then you want to make a tile like this here. It's not the first time I work with a bitmap in Substance Designer, but it took me some time to figure this out. In the end, it's easy. You just have to look carefully at the image and understand it. Here is the original picture. The main pattern is just lined up horizontally. Then you have a stack of horizontal lines with the pattern. And the horizontal offset allows everything to click. So that's what I wanted to get at first, just a line with the pattern. The blur and the histogram scan are optional. They just help clean the shapes a little. Then the mirror ensures that the pattern is perfectly centered in the square. The tile generator here got me the line. The Y interstice at 0.75 corrected the aspect ratio. And I just increased the scale a little at 1.025 to fall back on the original pattern. Then you just have to stack those lines vertically with an offset and it's done. The tile generator couldn't be used in this case because I needed to change the vertical size of the input line of patterns. So I had to use the tile sampler. And here are the settings that got me the best aspect ratio in my opinion. So it must seem easy, I know, but I had to try different ideas uh, before finding this. If you can get a result in a simple manner, it's always better. But simple sometimes is hard to find. Now it's time to talk about the layering system at last. But first, a quick look at the mask used for the wallpaper. It's just the basic wooden structure sent through a histogram scan and an invert. And we have our mask. This one was easy. For the layers, I started with this one, the metal beams, or it could be concrete beams also. It's just a gradient linear one, nothing special. Then the wooden beams. After that, I put on top what I called a plasterboard. It's just a uniform color with slightly higher value than the wooden beams. And the damage is taken care of by a noise, a dot 4, and a histogram scan to play with the damage amount. Then exactly the same thing for the coating, with a different noise, the black and white spot 1. I think uh, this part is simple enough, but now we have to go through uh, the wallpaper and its effects, knowing that I don't want the floral ornament to be part of the normal output. I just want it to be in the color map. But I'm not talking about the paper on which the pattern is printed, only the floral patterns. The actual wallpaper must go to the normal, of course. So I had to produce some damages. We go through them later. This damage pass, we just have to subtract it from the wallpaper and to put the result above the previous layers that we saw earlier with a max Titan blend. 
Now let's see how the color pass was done. In the gradient map and along its grayscale spectrum from pure black to pure white, I just have to match a specific grayscale tone to her color. So for the top value, the white, I chose a white gray color. That's for the ornament pattern. Then we have the actual paper, it's a pastel green, then a gray green and a tint of red. So this interval here for the coating. Brown for the wooden beams and dark gray for the concrete pillars or metallic pillars. I don't know yet. You get the picture. I think it's an easy way to make a color pass. Sadly, you can't uh, expose it, so you cannot change the colors in a generator with this system. But I think of something because I need this option. Maybe several gradient maps like this one and a multi-switch to choose the color scheme. That could work. The rest of the color for the structure is just a uniform color at this stage. Now let's have a look at the normal map. It's the blending of the wooden structure and the wallpaper and its details with the layers. By the way, the roughness at this point is derived from the normal with a curvature and an invert, of course. A normal to height HQ could give us more details but it's more costly. Let's try it to see the difference. For the ambient occlusion, same process than the normal part, a blend between the main structure and the wallpaper with its layers underneath. Now, the most important part of this video is the wallpaper effect, you know, the peeling. At its core, it's a simple subtraction. I made a damage pass and subtracted from the paper. The damage pass is simply a blend of grunge maps. We also have a slope blur based on the clouds too. A histogram scan to play with the effect. Kill it or make it huge. By the way, I wanted kind of a vertical damage, like this. This is done thanks to the Grange Map 2. Here I have a wallpaper texture. To feel like it's not a simple flat paper stuck to a wall, but rather a grainy, bubbly paper matter laid on an imperfect wall. This effect also depends on the normal intensity, of course. All right, here I have a secondary details pass for the paper, but it's a work in progress. So I prefer not to show you this yet. The last step is to have the paper curling at its edges. This technique could also work for a cracked paint on a metal. What I did is I inverted the damage pass and constrained it to the wallpaper mask. Now to curl the edges of that thing, it's easy. Just have to subtract it from itself as long as you blur it a little first. As you can see, it works. I used the directional warp to vary the effect and not to make it too predictable. It also helps a good deal with the borders. Let me show you the effect without the directional warp. and with it. To finish, you just have to blend it with the layers that come beneath it, and you have a big part of the normal output. You complete it with a normal combine. So we covered everything in the graph. I still have a good chunk of work on this project, but the system is in place. Now it's just a matter of details, Improvements, nothing major. I'd probably produce a complete corridor scene once this material is done. If you have any questions, as usual, please use the comments section. I answer every time. Thanks for watching. Have a good time with Substance. Bye.